So we have a piece here in the New York Times. It uh, dives into how the people of the country were essentially deceived about coronavirus while the wealthy elite were given warning, right? Really comes to the surprise of nobody, I'm sure. Um, it's how this country tends to operate. We don't get fair warning, the wealthy elite do. Pieces by Kate Kelly and Mark Mazzetti. I'll post it in the description box if you guys care to give it a read. Title is As Virus Spread, Reports of Trump Administration's Private Briefings Fueled Sell-Off, a Hedge Fund Consultant Summary of Private Presentations by White House Economic Advisors Fanned Investor Worries. So Larry Kudlow, guys, he's the director of the National Economic Council. He was appointed to that position a couple years ago by Donald Trump. He and Trump... And other members of the administration, obviously, uh, very much downplaying this, a number of governors, members of Congress, etc. The whole leadership of this country really, as a whole, um, failed miserably when it comes to this, this coronavirus and handling the pandemic. Um, You know, on they start the article here on on the afternoon of February 24th, President Trump declared on Twitter that the coronavirus was, quote, very much under control in the United States. One of numerous rosy statements that he and his advisors made at the time about the worsening epidemic. Um... He even added an observation for investors, quote, stock market starting to look very good to me. (laughs) We know all about Trump's obsession with the stock market and how detached from reality it is. Um, Larry Kudlow made similar statements. He went on CNBC and said that, you know, the virus was close to contained. They used the words, it's pretty close to airtight. Um, And yet the very next day, Larry Kudlow is speaking to a group from the Hoover Institution, including Hoover Institution, guys, is like a conservative uh, nonprofit. Um, And present is a hedge fund manager. He says, we just don't know. Totally different message, right? We just don't know. Well, that ends up spreading around Wall Street. The executives are, you know, on Wall Street. So the financial elite get the fair warning. You see how this works? It reminds me so much of those senators that cashed out their stock because they had access to this information because of their position, right? Kelly Loeffler and or Loeffler and uh, Richard Burr, Dianne Feinstein all cashed out a bunch of stock right before the virus hit. And they all try to say, oh, we have advisors. We didn't do that on purpose. Mm. How'd your advisors find out? Hmm. Okay. Um, you know, blind trust my fucking ass. Anyone who believes the blind trust thing... I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. All right. Seriously, got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Um, so, guys, it just it really speaks to, you know, the the two tier society that we exist within. Wall Street banks can commit fraud. They can commit crimes that, that ruin millions of people's financial stability. And they get bailed out when their bank fails because of that. <laughs> you know, they don't get charged with fraud. They don't get prosecuted. No, they get a bailout, right? What do we get if we commit crimes? Prison, right? And then we turn into labor for the capitalists. <laughs> Can you imagine a Wall Street banker going to prison and being in forced labor? Oh, it's disgusting, guys. Kelly Loeffler, like her and her husband are are immensely rich, hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, she's one of the richest members of Congress, right? So she gets to cash her stock out. Right? Her her husband is like really high up in the New York Stock Exchange, maybe even president of the New York Stock New York Stock Exchange. I might have that wrong, but he's, you know, so they're the wealthy elite. They get to cash their fucking stock out. They get to be financially, you know, better off. And it's not even as though the hit that they would have taken would have really actually affected their quality of life. You guys, when you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars and you take a loss on the market, it's not like you're all of a sudden in poverty. But what happens to us when the market crashes? We lose our jobs. We lose our financial security. We have to eat into our savings if we even are lucky enough to have savings, right? We end up uh, worrying about losing our property, you know, un- unable to afford health care, food insecure, et cetera, et cetera. The wealthy elite, they get the heads up so they can cash their stock out and be just fine. Absolutely disgusting. And it's one of those things that's like unsurprising, guys, on a I, I think there's like two tiers that we kind of operate on. I feel the same way about like the cop killings and, and a whole bunch of things in politics where it's like intellectually I'm not very surprised, but on a moral, emotional level, it's stunning every time. Do you know what I mean? It's it's like uh you see it and it and it kind of kills you every time that you see some shit like this. And yet intellectually you're like, Yeah, I probably could have predicted that. <laughs> you know, it, it I don't know, it's weird. Um, 
So again, guys, I will post this article in the description box if you care to give it a read. It kind of describes just how we exist within a two-tier society and how the wealthy elite um, get every advantage and we are left to suffer.